I love electric cars. I've been driving them for years. And while I love high-tech cars as much as the next EV YouTuber out there, some of my favorite EVs are ones that put functionality before gadgetry, which is why I have to admit to having a pretty big soft spot for the Bolliger B1 and B2 go anywhere utility trucks. Because at first glance, they're no nonsense gadget free work vehicles with decent performance and specs. They also remind me of the original Land Rover. Sadly, their price isn't so great $125,000, which puts them out of the price range for your average farmer, self employed tradesperson, and casual off roader. That said, the firm has been clear from the start that it's not targeting private buyers all that much. Instead, it's focusing on commercial fleet owners, where writing off the cost of buying an expensive vehicle is quickly offset by the fuel savings made, and where the more rugged the vehicle, the longer it's likely to last, and the more likely it is to get purchased in the first place. With all of that in mind, it probably comes as no surprise that Bollinger has just announced a new variant of its vehicle based on the B2 pickup, the B2 chassis cab. It's even less of a surprise if you consider that last month Bollinger announced the Bollinger E chassis, essentially a powertrain skateboard that it would sell to specialist outfitters, allowing companies to build a wide variety of vehicles on top of the company's drivetrain, battery pack and power electronics. The B2 chassis cab, meanwhile, sits in between the E chassis and the standard production B2. It's basically a Bollinger B2 without the pickup bit at the back. Bollinger says that the chassis cab will be available with a two or four door cab, that's standard or extended cab to most pickup fans out there, as well as a choice of full cab or cutaway cab. The distinction here being a fully enclosed cab versus an open rear, which allows access to whatever it is that the custom body is going to be put on the back. As you might have guessed by now, while we do have plenty of footage of the B1 and B2, Bollinger has currently only provided photos and illustrations accompanying this press release. So you'll have to forgive me if I'm using static imagery and non-chassis cab videos for this presentation. The concept of chassis cab variants of popular medium and heavy duty trucks isn't at all new. Pretty much every truck manufacturer out there from Chevrolet and Ram through to Daimler and Volvo offer some form of cab on chassis variants, allowing customers to then pay third party outfitters to build custom bodies to sit behind their truck cab. Ambulances, utility trucks, flatbed recovery trucks, and even, yes, some types of mid-size RVs are all built onto chassis cab platforms. So there's absolutely no denying that there's a very lucrative market out there for any company willing to build on top of Bollinger's foundation. In terms of specification, Bollinger is quoting all-wheel drive and all-terrain capabilities, thanks to those portal gear hubs, as standard, as well as 5,000 pounds of payload capability. In addition, the B2 chassis cab will feature the same stuff that the regular B1 and B2 have, such as self-leveling hydropneumatic suspension, 10 kilowatt onboard AC charger, and DC quick charging capability. Since the onboard power inverter is part of the charging system, the same one in the B1 and B2, there's also the same option for 120 or 240 volt power takeoff, which allows high power, heavy duty power tools, to be powered from the truck, even if there's no mains power nearby. This, of course, makes it super easy for any third party specialist vehicle outfitters to build a whole slew of different body options for the B2 chassis cab. And I think it would probably be especially of interest to utility companies who often have to travel into extremely remote areas to attend to power lines in the most horrendous of weather conditions. So all wheel drive, off road capability and onboard power are a must. At the time of making this video, we don't have a price for this new variant, but as I've noted before, the more vehicles Bollinger can make for commercial clients, the cheaper its regular pickup and utility truck will become thanks to economies of scale, and that will benefit everyone. And because commercial vehicle operators that rely on these heavily customized, often very expensive specialty vehicles are most likely basing their vehicles on big, powerful engines that are expensive to fuel and maintain and also happen to fail to meet emission standards, then I really don't think Bollinger is going to struggle to find customers. Sure, it's B1 and B2 will be out of the reach for many, including me. But this is a smart move that could secure the company's future for many years to come, just like Rivian has done much the same by working with Amazon to design and build delivery trucks for Amazon. That's it. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to help us make more videos like this, 
please do like, comment, and you can subscribe. Send us a couple of dollars away every month through Patreon or send us some money for our coffee habit with Kofi. Thanks to the folks scrolling by on my right. As you have probably understood by now, they are our charged up patrons. Donate $15 a month to us and you'll be joining them on this scrolling wall. Oh, and if you've just started donating at the charged up level, your name may not be here yet, but it should be soon. Special thanks to John Lyons and Raging Fellows for being our $50 a month self-driving patrons. They're going to get a complimentary tour of our studio if ever they are in Portland. And super uber special out of this world thanks to our Starman level patrons. That's Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback and Sean Udea for being our top level Starman patrons. You can join them at $100 a month and you'll get a personalised tour of the entire city of Portland plus food after social distancing ends, of course. Finally, I'd like to give a very special and heartfelt thanks to the family and friends of David Harrower, a long time patron of the channel, who I discovered today has just passed away. David became a patron of the channel back in 2017, and he was a long time electric vehicle supporter. Back in 2014, the Northern Saskatchewan hit headlines when he drove across Canada in his Tesla Model S as part of the second annual Sun County e Amazing race. This was while he was battling cancer and he finished second. On behalf of the entire Transport Evolved team, I want to publicly thank David for everything he's done to support us and electric vehicles over the years. And we send our deep condolences to David's family at this very difficult time. If you're looking for something else to watch from this channel, then Google thinks you might enjoy the video on my right. So go check it out if you haven't. And I'll be back soon with more content for you all to enjoy. Until next time, wash your hands, stay safe and keep evolving.